Hello, everybody. This is our first evening Zoom. It's so great to see you all. Thanks for joining me tonight. It's Thursday evening. Our first evening stream. Thanks for joining me. Today is January the 28th. I have a fun free project for you. So if you want to grab the pattern for this, it's down in the description box. Make sure to grab that. It's just a one page simple PDF and I'm going to walk you through the instructions during this video. You're here with me live. Make sure to join in the live chat. If you're watching on the replay, feel free to skip to where we get started making this wreath. So great to see you all. I had a family event today during the day and I did not want to reschedule our live stream because I look forward to Thursdays spending time with you. So I decided we'd come on at night and give that a try. Yay. I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> today we had a do nothing day with the women in my family. I don't know if you've checked out my auntie's craft room video from today, but if you haven't seen that, give that a view. It was so much fun. She was such like, I said, do you want to make a video? She's like, no, I'm not. I haven't done my hair. My craft room's a mess. All right, let's go do it. <laughs> It was one take. She was like a, such a professional. She did so good. If you haven't seen that video, it's up on my channel. And uh, that is the first video in a series we are starting. We're going to do all this year about your craft rooms. So I'm really excited about that, interviewing you, and you get to share off your craft rooms with us. But yes, that was an awesome video. Hello, everybody. I want to give a special shout out to all of my moderators this evening. Thank you all so much for keeping an eye on the chat. Uh, it helps me not worry about any of the nonsense that could happen. And uh, yeah, if you're on the replay, this is going to be a chatty video. Uh, it is the, the main purpose of going live is to chat. And I know that's not everybody's thing. But I'm really starting to become unapologetic for doing the lives and chatting during these videos. <laughs> so if the live video is not your thing, I totally get it. Make sure to check out some of the other videos here on my channel where I try to keep them short as possible, like 30 minutes or less. But yeah, make sure to grab the free PDF. It is in the description box below. It is so great to see y'all. It is so great to see you. Lucy said, I love the chattiness. Me too. Me too, Lucy. I mean, that's the real main point of doing the lives here on my channel is to connect with everybody. This is our hangout time throughout the week. And I've really grown to just love this time with everybody. So, yeah, we're going to chat it up. <laughs> Y'all feel free to have conversation in the chat. And, uh... If you have a question for me, if you type it in all caps, that makes it easier for me to see. But if I miss your question, please know that I don't mean to. Just repeat it and hopefully I can get to it. But yeah, we're going to uh, walk through the steps on how to make this cute uh, Valentine's Day wreath. I made mine from some blue jeans that were just too tight. Thank you, COVID, for supplying me with all the denim for today's project. I know I can't be the only one whose jeans are a little bit too tight after the last eight or nine months. <laughs> what did you have for dinner? I had chicken and dumplings for dinner. My dad made dinner tonight. Isn't that so sweet? Because we were gone for most of the day and he knew I was coming on live tonight. So he's like, I'll make dinner. He made chicken and dumplings and oh, that was so good. Donna finished her first memory quilt. Oh, Donna, that is so, I'm so happy for you. Hazel, you made it. Hazel, it's like 1.30 in the morning where Hazel is. Hazel, thank you for staying up so late. Mmm, vegetable soup. It snowed this morning here, y'all. And it's supposed to snow on Sunday and Tuesday coming up, too. All right, I'm going to switch the screen. I'm going to show you where I'm at with this project, okay? Mimsy, I know. Can you see my pie quilt? My t-shirt quilt is ready to mail out. That's sitting on the table behind me, so that's going out tomorrow. So I got a blank board on the behind me so I can put the pie quilt blocks back up. 
Vicki, you had to send your new machine in. Oh, no. You get a new machine and then you have to send it. I'm sorry. Let me switch the screen over to the cutting mat. So here we are, y'all. This is where we are. Repurposed. This is a repurposed project. This is a mailing box, <laughs> a box that some t-shirts came to me in. And I save bigger pieces of cardboard for stuff like this. So find yourself a great big piece of cardboard. And uh, yeah, I'm going to go through the steps on how I got right here. I made a little slideshow and everything. I made the slideshow. Of course, the instructions walk you through it, okay? So when you print this out, uh, if you're going to be making this later, the instructions walk you through it. But I'm going to show you in a slideshow. In a slideshow. Let's see. Let me go back to the beginning of the slideshow. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. All right, so the instructions. You need a great big piece of cardboard. And let me just measure this for y'all so you know about how big it is. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. The circle is 16 inches by 16 inches. So a piece that's like 18 inches wide would work great. That's going to give you a couple extra inches to work with. Oh, goodness. Stop. Go back to the beginning, Lisa. The slideshow is on automatic. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, so uh, a great big piece of cardboard is what you need. And then I just used a paper plate, okay? Just a regular paper plate. The paper plate was like, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten and a half inches big. The biggest paper plate you can find. Put that right down onto your cardboard box. And then with a marker, you just trace the cardboard plate all the way around okay and then you're going to grab a ruler and all the way around your traced line you're going to measure three inches and make yourself a bunch of dots all the way around the circle that you traced on the cardboard okay all the way around three inches away from your traced line and it should look like this. I'm hoping you can see the little black dots that I marked all the way around that center circle. And then you can take the marker and connect those dots to make a second circle that's three inches larger all the way around. Just like that. Just like that. Super duper easy. And then you're just going to take a box cutter, X-Acto knife, something that will cut the cardboard. You're going to cut out the center circle, and then you're going to cut on the outside line all the way around, and that gives you the wreath template, okay? That's everything to do that you need to do to make the wreath template. Recycled cardboard. Now, to make my heart templates, I gave you several different sizes of hearts that you could use on the PDF. I used freezer paper, y'all, and I traced all the different sizes of the heart template onto a sheet of freezer paper, and then I bonded that to another sheet. So my templates, right here, that's two sheets of freezer paper. So it's not super duper stiff, but it is... Uh, stiffer than a piece of paper, and it makes really great template paper. Of course, you could just use copy paper if you wanted to, right? A sheet of copy paper would work, but I used freezer paper to make my templates. And that there are four different sizes on the PDF. So that's where I am with that. That walks you through how to make the wreath template, and to trace your heart so you have four different individual hearts. Now, because I think from each one of us, we could make this look a million different ways, right? You could do 
all the same size heart repeated over and over and over again, however many times you wanted to. I used all four different size hearts to make my wreath, okay? And I haven't glued my pieces on yet, but I have made all of my hearts. And I'm gonna walk you through in this video the two different ways that I made my hearts, okay? And I did it super duper easy. Here, oh, <laughs> here's a red velvety one. Look, I didn't even put a backing on this one. That's just batting and some red velvet because you don't really see the back, right? Save that fabric if you want to. So I'm gonna show you how to make this one with the um, pinked edges, super duper easy. And then the smallest one, look how cute that is. It's little puffy, it's a little puffy finished heart. There's that one. I'm gonna show you how I made this one super duper easy, okay? We're not hand sewing any seams on this heart. <laughs> We're not doing any of that. I'm gonna show you how I did that. But I've gone through and I just made a whole bunch of them. But look, here's my two pairs of jeans. Two pairs of jeans. And uh, yeah, on the, on the big ones, I did use just some scrap pieces of red fabric. But on the smaller ones, I didn't even line them with the backing fabric because you don't see the back. So I saved a ton of fabric on those. Okay. So here's a whole bunch of hearts. And here's those. I'm going to go through and walk you through the two different ways I made these hearts. Y'all, this is not the only two different ways that you could make hearts for this wreath, but I'm gonna show you the quick and fast way that I did it. And I just breezed right through all of these hearts and there's a bunch of them. I think there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I did eight of the big ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of the next size heart. I think I did eight of all of them. Two, four, five, six, seven. Yep, I did eight of each one of them. Of course, you can change up the look of yours and do whatever number variation that you want to do, right? So first, let's start with the pink edge part. And this one, I will put a backing on it just because. So I have a piece of denim. I didn't even use an interfacing on the back side of it. I have a piece of recycled blue jeans. I'm gonna put the pretty side down. I have a scrap piece of 80-20 batting. We're just gonna lay that right in the middle. And then I have another piece of blue jeans. And we're gonna put that on top with the pretty side facing up. We're gonna bring in our template and I'm just gonna pin this right in place so it doesn't move around. I think two pins will do. I made all of these hearts, all of them, pretty quickly one afternoon. So y'all could make these wreaths really fast and get them up on your door in time to decorate for Valentine's Day. Yes. All right, so I have my heart template just pinned to the top layer. I'm gonna switch this over to the sewing machine. And I'm just gonna use a straight stitch, just a straight stitch. You could use a zigzag stitch. You could use any of the pretty decorative stitches in your sewing machine that you wanna use. And we're sewing around the whole entire template, okay? all the way around i'm going to bump up my stitch to uh, 2.6 i think and we're just going to sew all the way around like that Uh, 
like that. I'm trying to stay really close to the edge, but if you don't, if you get away from the edge of the template a little bit, no one's ever gonna know. <laughs> No one will ever know. Like that. I really like doing it like this because we don't have to turn this right side out. <laughs> this is super duper easy and fast. You can see how I went through a whole bunch of these in one one afternoon really fast. Just like that, there's one. We can take these pins out. Lisa, I am not using a denim needle. Let me tell you, I am using, let me show you the needles I'm using. These are the Smith's Universal Needles. And I know it's going to be a little bit fuzzy because it's really focused for this. But the size needle that I am using is the 7090, which is actually a small needle for two layers of denim. It's actually kind of a small needle for two layers of denim in a layer of batting. Uh, to be really honest, I probably would have used for the denim the 9014 over here, but you could see I'm all out of them. But the stitch is nice on both the front and the back. So I'm kind of pleased with that. <laughs> if you had interfacing on both layers of the denim, a, a jeans needle would probably be the needle to go with, right? Because that adds some stiffness to the denim too. And uh, yeah, you'd probably want to use a denim needle, a jeans needle, if you had interfacing on the back side. So now I'm going to take a pair of pinking shears and I'm going to pink the edges. Of course, you could just use a regular pair of scissors too, and that would be just as adorable. You could even with a regular pair of scissors, give yourself a nice seam allowance and then snip all of the edges. That would be super cute too, like a rag quilt. That, those are not my pinkies. That would be super, super cute too, wouldn't it? Now I'm cutting through two layers of denim. So of course this is gonna be a little, Stiff for pinking shears, but we're gonna do it. Y'all bear with me. Yes, the video of my aunt. She did so good. She was like a superstar. She was like a superstar today. She was so excited about it too. Everybody she talked to after that, she's like, there's a video of me on YouTube. <laughs> She's so dang cute. Two layers of denim with pinking shears. The other hearts that I did, I used a uh, just some regular quilting cotton on the back side, and it was a little bit easier to cut. But we're doing it. I don't think I'd want to do a bunch with two layers of denim with pinking shears because I can already tell that my hands would be really hurting <laughs> using the pinking shears to do this. But if you're just doing one or two like this, I think that'd be okay. So there's my first heart. You could even take this back to the sewing machine and do some quilting in here. Wouldn't that be cute to do some more quilting right in that heart? Valerie, your birthday is on Valentine's Day. Mine is on the 27th. So we both have February birthdays. Yeah, wasn't that a great video? That really was. Let's see, Diane asked, what machine are you using? I am using my uh, Juki HZL F600. I love this machine. I love it so much. 
Anitra said they make pinking blades for the rotary cutter. I know. I want to get one. I keep saying that, but every time I go to the store, I never pick one up. <laughs> Vicky, yours is on the 17th. Woo! February birthdays. So, look. See how fast and simple... How fast and simple that was, y'all. Super fast. You could bring this back and do some quilting. You could even cut out some smaller ones and just applique those right to the center. Wouldn't that be super cute? I think that would be cute. Now let me show you how I did the finished edge one uh, that is super fast. I think y'all have seen me do it this way before, but look, there's a slit on the back to stuff it with. You're not even gonna see that little slit. You're not gonna see it, but it makes making the hearts so much easier. And faster too. It's so much faster. So here I have two pieces of, uh, this is just quilter's cotton. This time we're gonna put pretty sides together. There's no batting in this, just like that. And let's bring in the next size heart template. And let's just put her right there. And we will pin this one in place too. <laughs> I know Hazel, my hand is hurting though a little bit to be honest. <laughs> to be honest, that did not feel good. Lisa Lisa said, what would a blanket stitch look like on a non-embroidery sewing machine? I love, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry. I love using the blanket stitch on my regular sewing machine. This is not an embroidery machine, but it has a blanket stitch and it is super cute on projects. So what I would do is grab some scrap fabric and play with the different settings with the blanket stitch on your sewing machine. Because you can get it to look like you almost like it's hand done. So I think that's really awesome. All right, we're going to bring this back to the sewing machine. Again, we're just sewing all the way around. This time I'm going to lower uh, the stitch length just a little bit to like a 2.2. I want my stitches a little bit closer together because we're going to be stuffing this one. Okay, so a little bit closer together. 2.2 .2 on my machine is pretty close. And we're just gonna sew all the way around the heart shape. I don't even backstitch because when I get back to where I started, I just pass where I started by five or six stitches. The curvy parts take me the longest. <laughs> yes, I am super excited to start showing off everybody's craft room. Uh, I would like to do one this weekend. So if you're free this weekend and you want to uh, make a guest appearance here on YouTube, email me or contact me on Facebook. I would love to show off your your crafting station, your craft room, wherever you make your creations. I would love to have you guest star. All right, right there. I know you're not going to be able to see it because the light on my sewing machine. And I'm using a white thread. But right here is where we started. I'm just going to pass that all the way down to here. That kind of just locks everything right in place, right? And then we don't have that bulky uh, back stitch right there. And then we can take the pins out. How do you decide on a stitch length? Veronica, I think it depends on what kind of project you're doing, right? 
And sometimes the fabric will determine your stitch length for you. If you're sewing your fabric, oops, I sewed on the paper a little bit. If you're sewing your fabric and it's starting to buckle up and pucker, then your stitch length probably is too close together. You probably need to make it a little bit longer so that the fabric will lay flat. Lisa, uh, the way I'm gonna do those videos, let me grab a pair of scissors while we're chatting. Hello, Miss Kayla, I love you. The way that we're gonna do the craft room videos is through Zoom, and I'm gonna send you a link, and you'll be on the, on the Zoom, and I'll be on the Zoom, and everyone can see us. And you can do it with your phone or your iPad, Something that you can move around so that you can show us your craft room. We're going to do a little interview and then you're going to give us a tour of your craft room. We're going to do it live. It's going to be live. I should have used a black thread so you could see that. I know you're not going to be able to see that so well. I didn't plan that out very well. I'm going to trim right around my stitch length. My stitch for my heart all the way around, just giving myself a small little seam allowance. Again, we did not leave an opening. I really should have switched over to a black thread. Just like that. Now, right in the middle of that heart, I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm just gonna do a couple of little cuts close right up to the stitch line without cutting through those stitches. And that's gonna help uh, the inside of that heart. And then I'm just gonna cut a couple little pieces in this curve. It's going to help it lay nice and flat. Just like that. I'm always really nervous to do that because I have, I have uh, shaky fingers and I'm like, <laughs> one of these times I'm just going to cut right through that stitch length. With this one, we're going to separate the front fabric from the back fabric and I'm just going to pull those right apart just like that. And the fabric that you want to be on the back, that's the one we're going to cut. And I'm just going to cut a slit right in the back, right in the middle. Like that. And like that. And it should be pretty big. Big enough you could flip this pretty easily right side out. Especially on the bigger hearts. On the smaller ones, I had to use the little tool that Sally sent me. But on these bigger ones, that's pretty simple, right? I'm gonna take my finger and just run it along those seams. This is gonna give y'all the perfect heart shape so you don't have to turn that opening. You don't have to hand sew anything. Super duper easy. Super duper easy. Miss Kayla, I wish you could have come to spend the night with Auntie tonight. Maybe this weekend. And we're poking out the little bottom of that heart. And just like that. There we go. There is our little heart. I'm going to give mine a press. I'm going to wake up my iron for a second. Perfect little heart that has a finished edge. Hey, <laughs> Karen said you're going to be inspiring everyone to go clean up their sewing room. <laughs> yeah, here's, here's a funny story while I'm pressing this nice and flat. Before we left 
to go camping in South Carolina. I did not want to come back to a serious disaster here in my studio. And it was tore up from the floor up, okay? I had so many prod, I had stuff everywhere. So I spent a, like a good majority of a day cleaning my studio, organizing. I even rearranged a little bit. And I cleaned it so good that, you know, the journal, the art journal I was working on, the videos that I did while we were gone. I cannot find my art journal anywhere. <laughs> That's how good I cleaned up my studio. I have not seen that art journal since. And I've looked in all the places that I thought I would have put it and I cannot find it. That's how good I cleaned up. I know, Connie. Oh, I, I just want to go through all of her boxes. Maybe next time I'll, I'll go through all of her boxes. She would have let me. She would have let me spend the whole afternoon in there if I wanted to. Okay, so at this point, if this is the way you want to go with your heart, you could leave it flat just like this, right? I think that's super cute. So you could do a finished edge and just leave it flat if you want. But I thought it would be cute to stuff it with some polyfill. So that's what we're going to do with this one. Just so you could see what it would look like. Yeah, I cleaned up my room so well I cannot find my art journal, which really bums me out. Because <laughs> there was a day the other day when I, I wanted to work on it. And I don't know what I've done with it. So right through that slit on the back, I'm just going to stuff some polyfill right into this heart. Just like that. You could stuff it a little bit. You could stuff it a lot. It's your heart wreath. You could do it however you want. That's going to be cute. Just like that. Now I have a puffy heart. She's puffy. So once you've gone through, no matter which method you decide to use to make your hearts, and this is just two of the ways to do it, right? Super quick pinked or cut edges, raw edge, I love the batting to show through. I think that's just super cute when it when it's like this. Or you could do a finished edge heart. Either way, you could do both if you wanted. But once you go through and you make all your hearts, you're going to break out your glue gun or some fabric glue. Tonight I'm going to use fabric glue because I don't have any more open plugs to plug in my glue gun right over here. <laughs> They're all filled up. And then you're just going to arrange the hearts onto your cardboard template. And this is really the fun part, y'all. Dari, I know. I hope I find my... I'll find it. I didn't throw it away. I know that. But I've stuck it somewhere that for the life of me, I just cannot find what I've done with it. So I think for this one, we'll do this and this. If you do the larger hearts first, y'all, it should cover that base just like that. You won't even see the cardboard. But if you don't do the larger hearts and you make a whole bunch of the next sizes down, you might want to paint your cardboard template or wrap it with some jelly rolls or something. That would be super cute too, right? Just wrap it with some jelly rolls and glue it down. That would be super cute. And because I can't plug in my glue gun, I'm just going to use some Fabri-Tac glue. That'll work just fine too. So let's start with these four. Judith, I thought maybe I'd brought it with me, but I know I didn't. I know I didn't bring it with me. Now, I do usually have my uh, travel journal with me. That was with me when we went camping. 
I'm just going to put some Fabri-Tac glue right on the cardboard, just like that. And glue that down, just like that. One of the reasons I love the Fabri-Tac glue is because it dries clear and super fast. And it is permanent. And it holds really nice and strong, too. So let's put that heart there. Good night, Miss Kayla. I love you so much. Do good in school tomorrow, doll baby. Do good in school tomorrow. We're going to glue this one here. Of course, you could arrange your hearts. You don't have to put them the way that I'm doing it. You could put them every which way you wanted to do it, right? Get creative with it. You don't have to use recycled denim either. You could use some pretty cute fabric. So there's my first four hearts. Look, it's going to be so big it doesn't fit in a screen. <laughs> With the lighter ones, I think we'll fill in the gaps. Just like this. So there's some glue. A little glue there and a little glue there. And we'll just stick that down. Then we'll come over here. I'm being kind of liberal with this glue, y'all. Sticking that down, just like that. I probably have strings all over the place that I need to go back and trim. That's okay, we'll do that after all the glue is dry tomorrow. Y'all, I have so many Valentine's Day projects lined up for everybody. I've just gone to town for Valentine's Day. So next week, we are making a bookmark live next Thursday. We're going to be our normal time next Thursday, y'all. Our normal time during the day. We're going to be making a Valentine's Day bookmark. It is super duper cute. I love it. That's going to be a free pattern. And then I'm recording uh, three, three or four videos. They will be shorter videos than the lives. I have two fantastic Valentine's Day mug rugs and a quilted Valentine's Day card. So those videos will be out in time for you to do some projects for Valentine's Day. If you are a Patreon, one of those you're going to get for free. So keep your eyes out over on the Patreon page because you're going to get one of those for free. But next week, y'all, we are making a bookmark live. It is Valentine's Day themed and it will be a free pattern. Look how cute that, de that denim is. Don't you love that? What kind of glue are you using? This is uh, the Beacon Fabri-Tac glue, which we did a Zoom on Creative Crew a couple of nights ago, and Sally was telling me that they've changed the name. Fabra. Sally, what's the new name? She might have already said they changed it to Fabric something or another. I forget now. But yeah, you can pick it up at Hobby Lobby, Joann's, Walmart, Michael's. You can get it on Amazon. Yes. I love it. Fabrifix. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you. Fabrifix is what the new bottle says. If they have the, the older ones like this, Fabri-Tac or Fabrifix. 
All right, so those are all glued down into place. Now let's bring in the next size heart. These, there's a pair of scissors. I have strings all over the place. These, y'all, I didn't even waste fabric on the back. It's just a piece of velvet with the batting. There's no back fabric because you're not going to see it anyway, right? So now we can just arrange these. Let's do a fun little layout like this. I think that's cute. Yeah, let's go with that. I'm just going to put some glue right on the back of this. Here and there. Oh, I love red and denim. Put some glue on the back of this one. I don't know. Y'all saw that video with my aunt in it. Did you see towards the end the wreath that she made out of the Dollar Tree paper doilies? Oh, it was gorgeous. I thought she bought it, but nope. She made that. Out of Dollar Tree doilies. So we'll glue that down. It was super cute. Her whole house is just adorable. She's labeled everything <laughs> with her cricket. It was so cute. I think I'm just going to do four of these hearts. So I'm going to have like four left over for another project. I made eight of them. But I like to look at the four. So there's that. Yeah, isn't that red gorgeous? It is. And it's velvety. It is so velvety. Ooh, Debbie's. Oh, it will be. Debbie said, once you get all the hearts in, the center is a star. It is. It is. It's a star. Let's bring in the next size down. Let's play with those. Oh, I think that's cute. Like that. I wonder what that would look like. Ooh, that's cute too. See, I'm going to place them here and then take a look and see. Ooh, I kind of like that. All right, we're going to glue all of them down just like that. Yeah, those were paper doilies from the Dollar Tree. Wasn't that cute? So we'll do that. I'm making a mess with this glue, I can tell you that. We'll glue that there. that one there. Did I glue that one down? Nope. <laughs> and that. I think this will be cute on the door. Or maybe I'll put this in the kitchen. I think this would be cute in the kitchen. We have a door in our kitchen that goes to the garage. I think this would be cute on that door. Oh, I'm making a mess with that glue. Just like that. Like that. 
Super cute. I love the check fabric too with the denim. I think that's very kind of country looking. I like that. How do you keep your lid from getting stuck? When it gets all gunky like this, see how gunky it is? I just take a piece of extra fabric that's in my trash can, <laughs> like the scraps, you know, and I just wipe off that little chunky stuff before I put the lid on. And it'll come right off, just like that. See how clean it is? And then I'll put my lid on. So I wipe all that stuff off first. Now we have the little tiny stuffed ones. I have eight of those. So let's see. Like that. I kind of just like the four. Let's see what it would look like with all of them on there. I'll let you call it just the four or eight. Ooh, no, I kind of like the eight. <laughs> I like all of them on there. What do you think? Eight. Okay, we're going to glue all eight. Now these still have the polyfill. You know, this just sticking out of that little slit, but that's okay. I'm just going to do like a little circle of glue right around that. Just like that. I know it's clear. You can't see it too much. But that's just going to hold the polyfill right in there and glue that heart right down. We don't have to sew that up. Just like that and squishy it down. Ooh, Heidi, yes, this would be an adorable table topper. Yes, it would be. I think if I were doing it as a table topper, I would have my hearts pointing out the other way. Oh, I wish I would have thought about that would be adorable. But even with them pointed into the center is still really cute, right? For a table topper. Just adding the glue all the way around. Just like that. Like that. I certainly think this is a better use of my tight blue jeans <laughs> than them taking up space in my closet. And you know what? These two pairs of blue jeans I kept trying to wear even though they were too tight. And like after an hour of having them on, I was so miserable and uncomfortable that I would go put on my stretchy pants anyway. So it was time to retire these blue jeans. I love using recycled blue jeans in my projects. Y'all know that. I would donate them, but they had stains on them because I wiped my fingers with glue. <laughs> Horrible habit that I have. If I have paint or glue like this permanent glue, on my fingers, I wipe the side of my jeans. So they're not really good to give to anybody else anyway. Why not cut them up and make a quilt or little projects with them? If you can't donate them. I think that's the last one. I might come back and re-glue certain parts so that it's kind of not Sticking up so much like that and hold it down like that and hold it down. Sally said every pair of jeans I have have paint on them. <laughs> Vicky said since the virus we're all PJ girl. Yeah. <laughs> 
I said one of my New Year's resolutions was I was going to wear regular jeans more often this year. Last year, I spent eight out of 10 days in pajama pants, which I'm totally fine with. But let me tell you my reasoning for wanting to wear regular pants more this year is I have plantar fasciitis. So I need to wear some good tennis shoes that support my foot and not walk around my, ha my house barefoot every single day. So if I force myself to put on regular jeans, then it doesn't look so silly if I have on tennis shoes, right? I really need to get my foot back to where it's not so painful every single day. I'm just pushing on these hearts so the glue will grab down like that. John, that's a good idea wearing an a I have two crossback aprons that I made. I need to start wearing those more often. Sally, I am taping it, but let me tell you, I got the purple tape for sensitive skin. But uh, it still bothers my skin. So I can only wear the tape for a max like two days. And it itches the whole entire time. Because I'm just sensitive to the adhesive. It works really great. But I'm just, oh, it itches like a thousand mosquitoes itching, the, itching my foot. And if it's not itching, it burns. One of the two. And it's like, oh. I can only wear that tape for about two days and then I have to soak it and get it off. <laughs> as soon as I take it off, the itching and the burning goes away. Here we are, y'all. Look, isn't that super cute? It doesn't all fit into, into the camera, but isn't that super cute? Now for a hanger, I just went to the Dollar Tree. Let me grab it. I went to the Dollar Tree and they had this Crafters Square Natural Jute Cord. This is what I'm going to use as the hanger. And I probably will use a glue gun for this, right? Because uh, I want it to be nice and strong. So I'll just cut myself off a piece of this jute because I thought that would be so cute with this, with the denim. And I'll just make a hanger that I will end up gluing to the backside of the wreath, right? Y'all, this is super duper light too, so it's not going to take a heavy duty hanger. I will just glue it right to the back side, a little hanger. And that's what the back side looks like. No one will ever know that it's just a cardboard box underneath of that. And it's super cute. I love it. I love it so much. Ooh, on the 1990s, I... I had three surgeries for plantar fascia. You did. The third one was the charm. I remain pain free. I'm going to tell you, it is, it is an awful pain. And sometimes it hurts. Even when I'm laying down, I just get a sharp shooting pain through the side of my heel now, which is like, I'm not even touching it. And it hurts. Ooh, Vicky said, so what about a little bow on them? Yes, that would be cute, Vicky. Yeah, you could do bows, all kinds of stuff, right? Lace, that would be cute, lacy bows. Joyce, thank you so much. Thank you. Y'all, this is just two ways to make the hearts. There's a hundred ways you could make these hearts, right? But the PDF does give you four different sizes to do. You could do all four sizes like I did. You could do all one size, right? I want you to get creative. No matter what you do, I want you to share pictures with me. So if you're on Facebook and you make this wreath and you're on the creative crew, share pictures because we want to see it. If you're not on Facebook like Miss Anitra, she sends me pictures through Etsy. So I get to see her stuff. There's a link to my Etsy shop. Jump over there. You can send me pictures through Etsy as well. I'm just flattening these down. 
hope I'm laid down a little bit flatter. But yeah, I want to see your wreath if you make it. Do yoga, Katrina said. It's surprising how far away tight muscles can be. Really? I'm wearing a brace at night when I sleep. I think it's helping. But wearing shoes with the great supports in them for the majority of a day, like I just took off my shoes right before I hit the live button and I've had them on since seven o'clock this morning. That's helping so much. So that's why I'm going to wear regular jeans more so I can wear my shoes more. And uh, yeah, but I got tired of wearing these tight blue jeans. I'm going to tell you that because it was just not comfortable <laughs> at all. So they're going in my stash. And I only used, okay, so you know a pair of blue jeans, you got the two legs. Well, both legs have a front and a back. So I just cut from the opening at the bottom to just above the knee on the front side of one leg on two pairs of jeans. So I have like three quarters of a pair of jeans, both the light and the dark, to put into a quilt project one day. Ooh, Sheila, next week you can start taking steps. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. J-K-A-R-R-E-Q said, I like the hearts puffy. It does give it more of a 3D look, doesn't it? It really does. It's super cute. It looks totally different. I'm going to hold it up like this in person than it does on this screen. It's cuter in person. But yeah, the puffy hearts give it some dimension to it, right? So what if you did more than just the little tiny hearts puffy? What if you did those puffy too? That would be cute. Yep, so this is a free PDF down in the description box, y'all. Have fun making these. I'm just squishing the little puffies down just one more time. I think they're almost dry, to be honest. Super duper cute. I like that a lot. I'm going to have to try the water bottle exercise. So many people have told me to do that, and I don't know why I don't do it. Ooh, Joan said, how about some heart buttons on the white hearts? <gasps> that would be so cute. I wonder if I have any. Let me go grab my little container of red buttons. There might be a heart one in there so we can see. Uh, I think they're all round. And it'll give us a good little idea anyway. I think these are all round buttons. Let's just pour them all out there. Oh, that's a cute one. It's not a heart, though. Oh, it's still cute, though, isn't it? That's still cute. Yeah, I think heart buttons would be adorable. But even the regular buttons is super cute too, aren't they? Aw, that is cute. Super cute. No heart ones. They didn't put any heart ones in there. I like the buttons. Good night, Miss Valerie. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for hanging out with me. I wasn't sure how the evening live stream would go. I certainly didn't want to cancel doing a live altogether. 
So thanks for hanging out with me this evening. Danielle, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> oh, there is a heart one. Uh, I bought them like this. I didn't organize my buttons and color coordinate them. They came like this. <laughs> I cheated a little bit. Joanne's had these little containers of buttons that were all, like I have a red one, a green one, a blue one, and a yellow one. So each container has that color of buttons in it. So they kind of did the hard work for me. I just bought them like that. There was a little heart one in there. I know she said cheater. She is so funny. I am a little bit, Danielle. Just a little bit. All right. I kind of really like the buttons, so don't you? I think that just elevates it just a little bit more. Yeah, I think it just elevated it just a little bit more. I think it's super cute. So next week, y'all. Okay, so next Thursday, we're making a Valentine's Day bookmark. It was inspired by a Christmas gift that I got from Miss Nancy. I am so excited. I'm not going to show you what it looks like. I've got it finished over there waiting. That's what we're doing next week. That live will be at our normal time, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on YouTube. Yes. I'm looking forward to that. And I've told people we're making bookmarks and they're like, who reads books anymore? I'm like, well, I use mine in my planner all the time. It stays in my planner. The one that Nancy made me, that's where it lives now. And it's super duper useful. So we're going to make a bookmark next week. It'll be Valentine's Day themed. Then I've got super cute mug rug ideas. I've already got the patterns ready for those. Those will be short videos. And then a quilted Valentine's Day card. Super easy, super cute. And it has pockets so you can stuff it with Valentine's. I cannot wait for you to see that. Those, that will also be a shorter video. Not sure when those videos are coming out, but I'm going to try to get them out as soon as possible so that you have time to make these projects in time for Valentine's Day. Because, y'all, that's only like two weeks away. A little over two weeks. Elaine said, I still read books. Yay. Yay. Joan, I'm so glad you're here. Your first live. Usually we are during the day. Usually. But I don't think I would mind coming on more in the evenings or on the weekends too. Barbara said the Dollar Tree is selling the buttons and containers like that now. What? I was just at the Dollar Tree it yesterday, the day before yesterday. My Dollar Tree has like a really outstanding craft section, y'all. Uh, I got this jute for a dollar. Uh, I got these really powerful magnets for a dollar. Velcro dots for a dollar. Um, they had felt and they had fabric and they had rotary cutters and really nice paint brushes. I am super impressed with my Dollar Tree selection. They are up in the game. They are up in the game, and what better time to shop at the Dollar Tree, right? Goodness. Oh, Tammy said, yes, please, live at night. I know more people are going back to work now, right? So it kind of makes sense. Santa the Sun said she found fat quarters at her Dollar Tree. Oh, Sheila likes the evening better. Zella loves the night chat. I'm going to mess up your name and I'm so sorry. Trinita? 
She reads to her son. You would love the bookmark then. It's going to be Valentine's Day themed. Did they have the little wooden crates? Hmm. They might have, Sally. I don't recall seeing them, but I could have just overlooked them. Oh, and she said, don't bother with the rotary cutter. Alexa's got one of the rotary cutters. She said it worked okay. It might be one of those hit or miss things because she got one that worked pretty good. But I could see where that would be one of the hit or miss kind of items from the Dollar Tree, right? Thank you, Miss Wanda. Yeah, I want to see it when you make yours, okay? I want to see it when you make it. I use a bookmark on my calendar to flip open fast. Me too. Me too. I have my corner one that Nancy made me. She embroidered my initial on it and send it to me for Christmas. It lives in my planner. I can just easily, quickly go right to the day. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing next week. Yeah, Barbara, if you got some of the buttons, I want to see what they look like from the Dollar Tree. Oh, Diana said, my Dollar Tree never has anything good. Don't feel alone. Miss Jeannie says her Dollar Tree doesn't have all the stuff we talk about either. I guess I'm really fortunate though, y'all, because in my area, let's see, a 20 minute drive, I can hit three Dollar Trees to the right of us and a 25 minute ride. I can hit about six dollar trees to the left of us and each one of them has different stuff. There are a couple of the dollar trees that are probably like yours, Diana. They don't have all the stuff, but some of them, like the one closer to my house, has a craft section that you would not believe. I'm like, I cannot believe this is Dollar Tree. Not all of them are like that. Yeah, Katrina said someone you can someone said you can order from the Dollar Tree online. So you might want to check out the Dollar Tree online if you have a Dollar Tree that isn't living up to Dollar Tree potential. You could check it out online. I've never ordered anything online from them. But uh yeah, that's not the first time I've heard that. Ooh, Mimsy's getting a new Dollar Tree. Thank you, Marsha. Yes, this is a fun project. This is a fun project. So y'all, what plans do y'all have for the weekend? I mentioned this while I was sewing, but uh, I would love to come live sometime this weekend and feature somebody showing off their craft room. So let's just talk about what that's going to look like, okay? Uh, the live videos for the craft room tours are not going to be on any set schedule because I'm going to work with your schedule. If you want to do this with me, I'm going to work on your schedule. So whatever time is best for you to do this. That's when we're going live. It is going to be live because trying to record these things and then upload them that way is a super pain in the tootie. Okay, let's just be real. It is. But I also thought it would be fun to get interaction from all of our friends here while we're live because if someone has a question about something in your craft room, I could be like, hey, Tina. Sandy wants to know what kind of, where'd you get your containers from? And we can have a dialogue this way when we're live that you don't have if you're recording. 
So you have to be comfortable going live, but you're really only going to see me. It's going to be like having a conversation with me, right? You're going to need to, yes, I'll switch the screen. Sorry. Uh, you're going to be able to, you need to be able to move the camera around. So make sure, like if you're using your phone, that it's charged up so it doesn't go dead while we're moving around your craft room. Maybe you're using your iPad. I'm sure you could use your laptop. I could move my laptop around too. It's just more awkward, right? But yes, that's what it's going to look like. So there's like these lives are every Thursday, usually at noon. The lives for the craft room are just going to come on whenever it's good for the person who's going to be the guest star for that day. So make sure that you are subscribed and you've hit the bell notification. When you hit the bell notification, a little menu pops up. Make sure you select all. Because if you don't have that selected, then you might not get notified when we go live. Do you sell fat quarters in your shop? No, Miss Brenda, I don't have any fabric for sale. No one's reached out to me to say, hey, would you like to sell our fabric line? Nope. No fabric for me. Penny said, I'd love to do that, but I need another month. We're going to do this series all throughout 2021. So you have plenty of time uh, to clean up and straighten up and organize. If you want to show off your craft room, it doesn't have to be like tomorrow or this weekend. Sally, you're supposed to get 8 to 12 inches of snow. I think we got an inch of snow. This morning, it's supposed to snow Sunday and Tuesday for us. Sand of the sun. You're going geocaching. We love geocaching. We have the apps on our phone. Uh, Harlan's even going to pay to upgrade our app so we get more of the geocaching sites because we are we've only done the free ones, but he's going to pay for the app. So we get, you know, more geocache locations. We love to geocache. Da, da, da. Just making sure I'm not missing anything. Linda, yeah, you can just hold your phone. If you have shaky hands like I do, y'all, I think I did pretty good today because I didn't even think I was going to make a video until I got there. And I was just holding my phone and I kind of like just braced it <laughs> like this. So my hands wouldn't shake as much. You, you want the phone to be kind of steady, right? But you don't need a special tripod or anything like that. But hopefully the less shaky your phone is, the better, the easier it will be to watch. Do you have a P.O. box where we can mail things to you? Miss Judith, I used to. I used to have a P.O. box before we moved. Uh, I had one because we had a post office that was pretty close to my house before we moved. But once we moved, I closed it. And now my post office is like a 30-minute drive. So I didn't open up another one. Uh, so I don't. But uh, email me at lisacapenquilts at gmail.com and uh, I can exchange my address through an email. Uh, yeah, maybe that will work. Hazel, yes, that's a little froggy. <laughs> See, he's got pins in him. I've got the two pin cushions now. I've got yours and Sally's. The little froggy. Hey, Miss Hazel made this for me and she sent it all the way from where she lives across the water. He's a traveling frog. <laughs> a 
What is geocaching? Dari, uh, do, a, do a YouTube search on geocaching. But So it's an app on your phone. It's like a treasure hunt, okay? And uh, so you pull the app up on your phone, and it'll give you a location to go to find a geocache. So, for instance, there's one near the target, clo not close, like 25 minutes away. So it tells you go by the target, and uh, the app tells you when you're getting closer to the geocache. And so this one was in a line of trees along the road. It's a road that no one drives on next to Target. So we got out and we were looking through the trees. And sure enough, Harlan found this one. It was a little yellow rubber duck, like a bath toy. And inside the duck is a little roll of paper. And it's a log of all the people who found it. And you sign your name and your date. And uh, then you mark it on the app that you found that one. It's like a little treasure hunt. Sherry said, can I have more than one device on at a time so I can see what everyone else is seeing if we're live? Uh, Sherry, we're going to be using Zoom to do these interviews and craft room tours. When we Zoom, uh, like I know that Sally has ha hosted a Zoom. And during that Zoom, I've switched from one webcam to another. So I know you're able to go back and forth from different webcam or cameras. So if you have multiple cameras set up, then yeah, you could probably do that. Oh, you paid for the app, Sand of the Sun. I Yeah, we're gonna pay for it too. Just scrolling through. I know I'm missing a lot of stuff. I have to come back and read all of the comments. Has anyone bought fabric from Tuesday mornings? No, but don't they have some really great stuff in there? <laughs> I love Tuesday mornings. Oh, Sherry said, come into the Zoom on several devices so it looks like I'm three different people. Yeah, maybe we could experiment with that before, before going live to see how it would work, right? I love rag quilts. You're making a rag quilt. I love rag quilts. You need help. What do you need help with with your rag quilt? We're just hanging out now. Our project is done. So if we can help you, we would love to. Ooh, Linda said she's bought a couple jelly rolls from Tuesday mornings. Yes, Tuesday mornings. I love their paper pads. I bought my, um, my Big Shot. From Tuesday mornings, I saved a ton of money on that thing. Uh, stamps, rubber stamps, ink pads, markers, all kinds of stuff. Dies for my big shot. All kinds of stuff. Trinita, the border or not? So you want to add a border to your rag quilt. Is that what you're asking? I've added borders to my rag quilts before. Wanda, you've never been to Tuesday mornings. Oh, you're going to have to check it out. You're going to have to go to Tuesday mornings. I think you're going to love it. They have all, they have the huge selection of paper napkins, really pretty ones. So if you like decoupaging or journaling and you like to work with paper napkins, they have some gorgeous ones in there.
Janie says she's never added borders to her rag quilts. I had one rag quilt that I put a border on because when I made the quilt, it wasn't long enough. I was like, well, how can I make this a little bit longer, <laughs> a little bit bigger? So I added a border to it and it worked really well. Santa the Sun said, I found that rag quilts need to be stitched with smaller stitches so the seams are strong and don't unravel. Good point. Good point. Yes. I think this wreath is super cute. I'm going to move the buttons so I don't lose them because they're not glued down. And it is really light, y'all. Look how light that. Ooh, look. Yeah. Isn't that so cute? I love that you can see the batting on the edges. I think that's cute. Libby Ann, hello. I'm so glad you made it before we're done. You're going to have to come back on the replay. Make sure you grab, it's a one-page PDF down in the description box. It gives you four different size hearts to make this wreath with. And then come back on the replay. In tonight's video, I'll walk you through just two of the ways that you can make these hearts. Super fast, super easy. You can knock out this wreath in a short amount of time. I used recycled blue jeans that were too tight, thanks to COVID, <laughs> but you could use all kinds of fabric. I just happened to use some recycled denim for mine, but it is adore. It is so cute. Look at this. I think I'm going to hang mine up in the kitchen. I think I am. Yes, take a picture of it. If you're on Facebook, take a picture of your rag quilt. Join me over on the Creative Crew, okay? There's a link for Creative Crew in the description box. It'll bring you over there. If you're not already a member, answer the two security questions. And then you're in the Creative Crew. You can easily post pictures there, and you're going to get all kinds of help on that page. If you're not on Facebook, there's a link to my Etsy shop in the description box. Jump over to Etsy. You can send me a message right through my Etsy shop and you can attach pictures that way. So send me a picture of it. I'd love to see it. And sometimes when you see something, it's easier to answer questions if you see what they're talking about. It's so much easier sometimes to answer questions or to give advice. Or feedback on a project if I can see what you're what you're doing so that's two ways that you can uh, send pictures to me you can also send it to my email Lisa Capen quilts at gmail.com gmail yeah <laughs> yeah you can make a wreath like this for all of the seasons you might want to change up the hearts or maybe change up the fabric. Still do the hearts, but do like beachy stuff for the summer. Yeah. Good night, Miss Penny. Good night. Yeah, we y'all did good on the thumbs up tonight. Oh, you made your mom the tea and coffee uh, pocket pouch. Oh, that's so sweet. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. She has used it every day. I'm so glad. Mm, that makes me happy.
Dari said, ooh, the cookie cutter ornament pattern turned into a wreath. Yes. Could you imagine doing this instead of hearts? Do it with the gingerbread men. Wouldn't that be so cute? Gingerbread men, little Christmas trees. That would be cute. Yeah, that's a great idea. Y'all are so welcome. Y'all are so welcome. Well, this was fun. This went a lot smoother for an e evening stream. It went a lot smoother than I thought it might. <laughs> Maybe we will do evening streams more often. I think that would be fun. She puts her medication packets in. Oh, that's so smart. Angie, I'm so glad you told me your name because I'm like, I don't even know how to say J-K-A-R-R-E-Q. <laughs> Angie, okay. That's so smart. Yes. She can take her stuff with her on the go. You're welcome, Miss Diana. You're welcome. Ooh, pumpkins and shamrocks and flowers and turkey. Yes. Rabbits for Easter. Y'all are so smart. Y'all are so smart. Yes. Well, I guess there's endless po possibilities, right? Endless possibilities. Save those cardboard boxes you get in the mail when you order stuff. Even if you have to tape a couple of them together to get the size that you need for the wreath. Nita, I hope this finishes up your long, stressful day at work. I hope this has been a great way to end your day. I hope so. Good night, Miss Connie. We're getting ready to go, too. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me tonight. Thank you to all my moderator moderators for keeping an eye on the chat. I'm going to tell you, I don't want to stream live here on YouTube without my moderators. So y'all really make these videos possible because I don't want to do them without you. So thank y'all so much. Thank you so much. Y'all, okay, if you make one of these wreaths, I want to see it. I want to see it. Post your pictures. I want to see it. So does everybody else. I hope y'all have a fantastic night. Hit me up if you want to show your craft room off this weekend. So keep an eye out for an impromptu live. And uh, keep your eye out for a couple of mug rug videos. They're going to be super cute. I can't wait for you to see them. And next week, Thursday, set your alarms. We're making Valentine's Day bookmarks. They're super cute too. I've been so busy designing up a storm. All right, everybody. I hope y'all have a good evening. I feel all energized up. I don't know why I drank decaf tea this evening. That's crazy. Have a good night, everybody. Bye.